Welcome everyone to our Ethnoi Talks. My name is Pedro Fardim. I am president of Ethnoi Association. Ethnoi Association is a non-profit uh, organization promoting research, education, and knowledge transfer between academia, industry, society in all fields of uh, polysaccharide science and technology. We offer several advantages to our members, including network and collaborations, project building opportunities, uh, career advancement opportunities, uh, and also uh, discounted fees in our events. Okay, today it's my great pleasure to have the winner of the first Ipnois Young Scientist uh, Award um, Prize that was given this year in our Ipnois Junior Conference. So it's my pleasure and honor to welcome Dr. Yuang Wang Li from KTH in Stockholm. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks uh, for the introduction. Yes, it's a great pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, Dr. Lee, I would like to, to talk to you about your research initially. So uh, you got the, the Young Scientist Award because you have an impressive number of, of articles, an impressive uh, amount of research for your age and for your career. And what called the attention for the evaluators was also the topic of your research called this polysaccharide nanotechnology and wood nanotechnology. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about your research? Yes. So uh, my research is mainly focused on wood nanotechnology. I think you're interested in what is wood nanotechnology. So that is referred to the science and uh, engineering that uh, working on uh, wood nanostructure understanding, wood nanostructure controlling to extend the property range and uh, to add new functionalities. So nanocellulose extraction and application is one aspect of a wood nanotechnology that you extract uh, nanocellulose from uh, uh, wood materials and then further uh, assembling into like one dimensional filaments, two dimensional film or papers, three dimensional uh, air gels. This is uh, um, normally accepted as a bottom up approach for nanomaterials uh, preparation. Right and here, I want to focus on uh, top-down approach. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So this uh, um, part of a world now the technology focused on using the extinct uh, existing wood structures that the nanocellulose in the wood already highly uh, oriented and uh, um, it's well dispersed at nanoscale. So that is uh, uh, different from the bottom up approach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what is then, Dr. Lee, what is the advantage then of using the, the top down approach in comparison to this bottom up? I understand it, what, what, what you say that the bottom up is like, you have to break everything down first and then you put them together in order to obtain a new material, right? And for the top yes. down, you don't need to do the, to, to have all these operations in breaking. So, but for people that are following us here, for our viewers, what is what is the advantage of the top-down approach? Yeah. So, um, bottom-up approach, as already mentioned, uh, I think there are two main challenges. As you mentioned, you first need to uh, extract the building blocks and then reassemble into the structures. The energy input during the processing is, is uh, substantial. And uh, another challenge is that uh, it's difficult to realize really high level of orientation for the large and the load bearing uh, structures. 
and also the dispersion of the building blocks uh, in the nano composite is also a challenge to have a really good dispersion. That, that's, therefore, the top-down approach is attractive since uh, first the energy to extract the building blocks is minimized. And second, the nanocellulose dispersions really good at nanoscale in the wood structure. And the third is that wood has a high level of hierarchy. So that's the top down approach advantages. Mm, I see, I see. So I would like to know a little bit more about your career and about why, why this topic has attracted your interest. I, I, I see in your CV, I've seen you, you have been studying in, in Nanjing University in China is a very well known in the field of forest and Nanjing Forest University. And then uh, now you are in Sweden. Can you, can you tell us how this, what, 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 what was the motivation to go to Sweden? How this happened, if you plan it or not? Can you tell our viewers a little bit about your, your, your career? Yes. So first I'm really interested in biology and the Nanjing Forestry University has excellent majors in wood science and technology, light industry, food engineering that are related to, to these uh, trees and uh, polysaccharides. And then I joined the university since I'm interested in the majors and uh, uh, studied there for around 10 years. And during my PhD, uh, I visited uh, uh, University of Maryland and uh, there I got some connection with uh, uh, KDH. And also, you know, I read uh, a lot of papers, really nice work from KDH. So then I decided to move to Sweden after PhD. Oh, nice, nice. Wood is quite, it's a very intriguing material, isn't it? I mean, I, I, I see, also for me, I'm, I'm being inspired by, by wood since I was it's in my childhood because it's an amazing, it's an amazing material. Right? The trees, they can survive thousands of years. They are responsive to the environment. Can you tell us what you find most, most amazing in trees? What, what is your preferred qualities of trees that cause your attention? Uh, I think first is this uh, advanced uh, hierarchical structure that uh, the cellulose uh, from nanoscale, they are preferable aligned. And then they have different levels of a hierarchical. Uh, from nanoscale, the, the cellulose, hemicellulose, you know, they, they form a, a from micro uh, nano cells, micro fibrils, bundles, and then further go to uh, millimeter scale, these rings, growth rings. So the structure is really important. And also, you know, the porous structure is really important for many applications, like uh, uh, for this uh, uh, transportation of. Uh, uh, neutrons, uh, metal ions, waters, these are really important for materials design. And also polysaccharides, the, the main comp components, they have a, uh, a lot of possibilities for multifunctionalizations. So mm -hmm. you can use the structure and you can tune the structure and you can modify the structure for your purpose. Yes, you mentioned the tree, the, the, the rings, eh? the year rings of the trees. There's an amazing research and people showing that they can do research about prehistorical levels, even of carbon capture on the planet and so on based on tree rings. So these tree rings, they are like recording eh? the environment that the trees have been exposed to. It's a really amazing, right? This tree structure. Yes. You know, trees are really smart. 
Yeah. They can tune in this, their structure according to the climate change. Yes, yes. And uh, that's what is also caused attention on your research. I mean, because you, you are also producing smart materials from this smart natural material that is the tree, right? I see here that you talk about the uh, preparation of smart windows. Can you tell us about what is a smart window in your concept? Uh, from my uh, understanding, uh, based on our wood materials, the smart window uh, can be divided into uh, one is the energy saving. That is the smart part. Second is the optical property tuning. And the third is energy uh, storage. Uh, so we have uh, three works uh, for each demonstration. Uh, for the uh, energy saving transparent wood, you know, it is really high uh, transmit uh, transparent. So the light can be transmitted. So the artificial light during daytime can be partially uh, saved if you use transparent wood. And the one advantage is that uh, the light is not only transmitted, but also diffused. So uh, indoor privacy can be, uh, can be realized through transparent wood. So the second uh, uh, for the optical property uh, tunable that you can realize the, uh, through uh, the electrochromic devices or the devices that you can control the haze. For this, the transparent wood using for buildings, for windows, that you can um, control the light transmitted into the indoors according to a requirement. If I want it highly uh, transparent, low haze, then I can tune at low haze level. If I want it uh, uh, light transmitted, but uh, high haze that you couldn't see anything inside, you tune to a high haze level. And you can also tune the color to block the, the variant to the inside uh, environment. The third, part, yeah, the third part for the energy storage, so we can include the uh, phase change materials, for example, into the transparent wood structure. Then, you know, the energy can be stored into the phase change materials when the uh, when the environmental temperature is high, but this energy can be released when the environmental energy uh, environmental temperature is low, so that is smart. Oh, I see. That is really really smart. I mean, you, you mean that we can have a window, so instead of glass, right? Yes. Instead of glass, we would have your smart wood, and the glass today has. Yeah, the properties of there has also some effects on keeping the temperature and also that we can see through it. But uh, with the glass, for example, we would need to have uh, some sort of uh, curtains or systems to have our privacy. We don't have any way to do any way to somehow exploit uh, the the glass today as a source of a uh, of a source of energy, uh, right? But with your approach. We would have a, a window that is that is much more. It's a, you can you can control the transparency. You can even use it as a way to as a source of, of energy, right? So and this is all coming from wood. Is, is the wood structure preserved? Yes. So that's a, that's a really amazing part of this work that we preserved the the wood structure. We just only mold. Uh, modified the wood structure to remove the light absorption. And mm -hmm. then we match the uh, refract, then we uh, infiltrated the porous structures with refract index matched polymers. Then we have a transparent wood. Oh. And uh, for multifunctionality, we can either um, include uh, particles, polymers, modifications into the structure 
all building um, functional devices on top. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Let me know. Uh, functional devices on the top. Uh, uh, do, let me let me understand. To put functional devices on your window, or to use this material to build functional device that can be used elsewhere. Uh, so you can build the functional devices directly on top of the wood. That means just uh, one layer of the window. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that is very, very interesting. What could be other applications of this transparent wood, Dr. Dr. Lee? For example, is it possible to apply for photonics and, and solar cells or other applications? How do you see that? Yeah, that's actually really important aspect of our work. We call it wood photonics. So, mm -hmm. so I think one important work is the luminescent transparent wood. We include uh, this luminescent particles like quantum dots or luminescent dyes inside the transparent wood structure. And uh, we have diffused luminescent uh, transparent wood. And it can be used for laser preparation. It shows the diffuse laser properties of the uh, luminescent transparent wood. And we can also use the transparent wood as a substrate for solar cell devices. And then, you know, this structure, uh, this will be a load bearing structure for solar energy capture. Oh, it's a wonderful, it's wonderful. So much, so much from wood, so much. Uh, amazing, an amazing material. Uh, Dr. Lee, I look, you have a very nice list of publications uh, in very nice journals. Uh, you are taking the, the wood and the natural materials to journals with scientists that are working with somehow more, I would not say sophisticated, but more fancy materials in electronics is one artificial one, right? I will, I'm curious here while looking at your publication list, what is your favorite article? I mean, the article that you, you are proud that you have been, you, 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 you published. Can you tell us? Yes. So first I think uh, I love all my work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, you, if you see um, the favorites, favorite or important, really important to the following work is the one that, that we published in bio uh, micromolecules. The first work on transparent wood or the created, the creation of a porous wood template, the delignified wood. That leads to our transparent wood work and also later on the wood aerogel work. And the wood aerogel work is a new material platform that is really important for us to, to dig into in the in the future. And what is an aerogel? I mean, to our to our viewers that they don't know what is a, what is a wood aerogel. So first, I want to mention the characteristics of aerogel. It's um, it's low density, highly porous and uh, high, uh, has high specific area. So aerogel normally uh, dimension the pores in the, they are pores in the meso uh, porous level. Wood aerogel uh, is a aerogel is, and pre has preserved or partial preserved wood structure, I would say. So our wood air gel is made by uh, delignification and then further partially dissolve the wood structure and regenerate nanofibrils in the lumens. It's a new structure. Oh, interesting. So instead of using traditional methods of preparation, uh, you, you are using a method where you are preserving the original structure present in the, in, the, in the wood. Yes, if you see the macro structure, the, the wood aerogel block, like one centimeter by two centimeter by two centimeter, it's the same as, uh, as uh, uh, native wood 
of course, is white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the dimension is, is almost the same. Mm -hmm. But if you go too deep, see the uh, nanostructure is totally different with native wood. Oh, I see, I see. And what about the, the surface area and the properties? There are any differences? Um, for native wood, the dried native wood, normally the specific area uh, less than five uh, square meter per gram. But for our wood air gel, it's around 250 square meter per gram. This is much more uh, porous and has uh, a much better specific area. And uh, the good thing is that it combines the high specific area with go good uh, mechanical property compared with uh, the aerogels made from nanocellulose. Oh, I see. It's very interesting. So I, I noticed, Toki, you are working on, uh, on the uh, Wood Wallenberg Center in Sweden. Can you tell a little bit about, about what the Wallenberg Center is doing? Yes. So Wallenberg World Science Center uh, is a research center focusing on new materials uh, uh, from forestry. The mission is to create uh, the knowledge and uh, competence for, uh, for eco-friendly materials in the future. So mm -hmm. it's a really good uh, research environment. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is, uh, what do you think about how important, Doctor, is the multidisciplinarity? I mean, this is a work only for engineers, you see, you, you look at biological aspects. In your view, what are the expertises that are needed in order to, to know more about wood? I think first of all, course, you need to know uh, the wood structures. You need to know the wood size. And uh, uh, it's also important to have uh, the views from other, uh, dis other majors or other angles. And uh, for, I think one example is that if you see a uh, wood nanocellulose, it has a really similar dimension with common nanotube. Then you can, uh, you can generate new ideas related with this same dimension. And can we make, make conductive, uh, like conductive wood, conductive fibrils that is similar to common nanotube. So it's important that you also can have a connection with other majors that you see the things from different angles. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, you are talking about conductive. Can we make conductive wood also? Yes, yeah. that's, uh, that's another, uh, another aspect that I'm really interested in. Oh, we can okay. make conductive wood either by uh, commonization uh, I think we demonstrate that for the wood air gel work, you can directly commonize the wood air gel and use it for energy uh, saving or energy storage devices. You can make it conductive through uh, the synthesize of conductive polymers inside the structures, like P dot PSS. You can synthesize or infiltrate the polymers into it. You can also make it conductive by the conductive uh, uh, particles, like um, metal particles. Uh, for example, silver, copper, you know, put into the structure and make the whole block to be conductive. Ah, that is wonderful. I see you are really passionate about your work and I'm wondering, I mean, what would be your advice for, for young scientists and particularly for young girls that would like to, to pursue a, 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 a successful career in science as you do. So what would be your advice, your tips? Well, my, uh, I will say tips. <laughs> uh, first, uh, need to work hard. Mm. So as a researcher or scientist, 
you need to be prepared to in, to put more energy and time onto this. And the second is uh, uh, collaborations or uh, get connections with uh, experts in your field and also uh, necessary sometimes out of your field. As we mentioned, multidisciplinary is really important. I also want to emphasize one point here is uh, to be confident. You need to be confident that you need to believe in yourself. What you are doing is important. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Very interesting, very interesting, very interesting suggestion. Yes, and maybe my final question, how will you see the future of these materials? It seems you are touching a very nice area with this wood nanotechnology, smart windows, solar systems, possibilities from conductive materials. So, but what is the future? How do you see these materials um, now in the following years? And what is your contribution to make this field grow? So first I want to start with the, the origin, uh, working on wood. You know, now we are uh, calling for sustainable uh, development. And this creates uh, really good uh, opportunities for wood or biomass materials. So, so the first, uh, of course, is the materials we are working on. And uh, second, that is the control of the structure is possible. And uh, uh, there are already a lot of uh, new concept development based on the wood structure control. And uh, wood nanotechnology technology is really under rapid development right now. But still, I think there are challenges. We need to further uh, solve or yeah working on this for example the the effect of the treatment on the structure of wood is you need to clarify like uh, uh, how the my how the nanocellulose fibrous aggregations or the partial structure uh, development during your treatment this need to be further clarified. And also the wood cell wall nano engineering is challenging and uh, important. So the particles, if you introduce uh, extra particles into the structure, how to control the uniform dispersion into the structure. And also new concept of uh, materials design based on the wood is also another expert, I think it worth digging to. Okay, so it was a great pleasure to have you here, Dr. Yuan Longli, the uh, uh, winner of the Ipnoi Young Scientist Award, the year 2021. We wish you success in your research and thank you very much for your participation in Ipnoi Talks. Thank you. Thank you.